Okay, and Tyler, you're up. You're muted. There we go. Hello. <laughs> uh, so I have two of the uh, two of the three pictures, and then I have basically like a bonus picture that um, I believe it was Sydney. Yeah, um, that Sydney had, but she had to leave. So I'll go through the two, and then briefly run over. Uh, host disabled screen. Uh oh, uh, screen sharing is disabled. Oh, here you go. You're gonna get it in a sec. Give me the power. <laughs> you got it. Everyone can screen share. I think it is that one. Yep. Okay. So we've got that, not that picture. That's one of them. Okay. Um, so with the picture, just going through analyzing that, um, when it comes to age, um, I would have to assume this kid is probably like anywhere from like eight to 11. This younger kid out on the streets. Um, He's, yeah, he's younger, he's black, but he's kind of got a um, kind of, uh, what would you call it? I would assume right off the bat that he's got kind of like a, like a groovy street vibe. Um, I don't know what kind of an area he'd be living in, um, but I assume it's obvious he's out on the street. <laughs> um, health i would say he looks like he's in pretty good health mm. he's, he's got hair he's he seems like he's having a pretty good day really <laughs> um aside from that i'm not sure what else to go over okay uh, so a couple things about that image is mm -hmm. first of all we can't see his face oh oh gotcha i'm sorry about that right okay so that just a thought so it's a little tough if you were going to have to create a likeness of this kid on someone else, which, by the way, we had to do when we were doing a Michael Jackson Pepsi video, and then we had to do uh, him younger, and then mm -hmm. we had to create a younger kid. Well, that didn't work out anyway because Michael Jackson didn't ever claim that he looked like that, although it was a picture of him. And, uh, you know, he wanted a, a kid that looked like him now with his uh, longer curly hair. So it was a, with his long wavy hair. I mean, it was crazy but you would need something close up, okay? So let's go to your next picture. Go back. But he, there's a lot of personality in that picture. So instead of the other picture, because it's not much of a face picture, let's do Sydney's. Be, okay. Yep. So this one's Sydney's. She was looking for somebody who uh, classifies more as uh, I think it was non non-binary. Mm -hmm. uh, and one thing, uh, one thing that really stood out for me, and I mean the colors themselves all together stand out incredibly. Very very high contrast between them. But uh, the hair, how it's shaved down. Uh, I believe this person beforehand was a woman. Um, but I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. Let's see. Um, question about your face factor. Um, yeah, yeah I think not. it's just, I think that it, it probably is not, uh, probably better for just, just to look at the image and accept where they are right now instead mm -hmm. of thinking about before or after, unless we're doing a full storyline on that. So, yeah, I think it, what do you, the contrast between the hair and the eyebrows maybe is something interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. that you that I think you noted and then the lip color is very subtle mm -hmm. and the skin uh, you know it's a it's a really great picture of really non-binary you could that person is very fluid on the fluid schedule and you you and a fluid line between male female and is and really isn't leaning much one way or the other so it's really a great person in the middle mm -hmm. And that is denoted by skin texture, uh, the strong eyebrows, you know, maybe this person you could go either way, you could either, you know, stipple a beard on them and get them more, you could masculine, masculinize or you could feminize with eye makeup and a wig and other things like that. So you want to see where you can go with that. 
I think that really works out well too with um, even the way that the jawline to the chin is very, very, nice. uh, very yeah. simple, very smooth curve. Um, I would think it would be more of a, uh, from this angle, I would almost think round, but it, it, I don't know, it kind of, to me, fits somewhere in between. Cause it's- I think it maybe is more rectangular than we think just because of the tilt of the head. Yeah. Also you have, it's harder. This person has a little bit more flesh on their chin, so it might be a little mm -hmm. heavier, which then conceals sometimes what the face actually is. So great, good. And uh, Anastasia, do you wanna do your share from your room? There we go. Oh, sorry, you know what, let me unpin you and get her. Anastasia, we can't hear you if you're talking. Mm -mm. So you need to unmute. There we go. Oh, sorry for that. That's good. No worries. And now we can see you side by side with it. So this is a woman uh, at her maybe early 30s or yeah or maybe a little bit older than 30. Yeah uh, she's a white. Um, her environment she seems like uh, working from home. So um, her health I can say that she's uh, she's tired because we can see a baby on on her. <laughs> um, what else? Personality. Um, I think she's um, not um, staying home mom, so she prefer work and be with a kid. So she's hard working uh, and she's also wearing um, an office clothes. So we can say that she is uh, a business woman or something like that. Yeah. What else? Ooh, I can say that she's wearing makeup Okay. Anybody else have anything to add? Again, if we had a little bit more face showing, it'd be a little bit uh, better. But you got you have really good character on this because you can see eye bags. You can mm -hmm. see that you get sort of a downcast and thinness of the face. Good. Let's go to uh, let's go to the twins, Ellie and. <laughs> Okay. Um, be sure you identify who's talking because everyone else might not know your name. Okay. So am I keeping mine on? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm talking. This is Ellie. Um, how do I? Sh there we go. Screen shares share. up there. Good. Okay. So we we I we I think we thought that we were just supposed to do just like characters and like from shows or like movies or something. So we each kind of picked like a different character, but that's okay. Yeah, so this They're is Rue from wrong, Euphoria, the show Euphoria, yeah. and um, I chose her because I liked, well, you can kind of see her emotion, like she's like stressed out, and she, I liked her gl the glitter under her eyes and like the dark um, eyeliner around it and the glitter underneath. Um, yeah, and then she's like in her 20s, I think, and what else do I have to say? Um, Person, you can see that she's like kind of tired a little bit, like a little bit stressed out. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, should I say anything else or is that oh, good? You can go to the next one if okay. you want to go. Uh, and then I'll stop. How do I stop here? You, did you stop, Sherry? You figured it out, right? She's going to oh, yeah. do, yeah. Okay. So then I chose Cruella DeVille. 
Yeah. Um, she's a very dramatic. She's very dramatic in her like eyeshadow and her lipstick, mm-hmm. and um, she's very manipulative and just kind of dramatic in general. And she always has like I know it's like usually a cartoon, but in the cartoon and in like most people that like recreate her, it's very like I don't know how to explain like a very chiseled out face, like very strong nose and like jawline and like cheekbones and stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I also just I think her hair is very fun. I think her I like her hair. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and how old do you think she is? I would say she's probably like mid thirties, forties. Uh, probably forties, I'd say. <laughs> and uh, what environment does she live in? Um, I'm trying to remember where she lives in. I just she's very elegant. She's always has her dogs. I just feel like she's very. She puts herself very like high up. If that makes sense, like she just feels very. Yep. I don't know how to explain it. Just like very, not prestigious, but that kind of word, if that makes sense. Eccentric. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And who's the last person in your group? Miranda. Me. Oh, Miranda. Yes. Uh, let me share my screen. Share. Okay. Um, so Edward Cullen from Twilight. Um, he is a vampire. Mm-hmm. He's a male. Um, he's very white because that's, um, you know, without blood. Yes, he's without blood. He's not. Um, he's not alive. Um, he died. So he was born in 1901, but you can't tell because he's stuck as a 17 year old boy. Um, and he, fun fact, he died of uh, in 1918 of the Spanish influenza um which is appropriate yeah so really fun um and he's very serious most of the time he's funnier in the books but not in the movies he doesn't really have a personality in the movies um and but you can kind of see like he kind of looks a little bit constipated in this one or just like, like a little bit uncomfortable um so which speaks speaks volumes of who he is as a person because he he really he's just a really serious guy for all of the all of the story so mm -hmm. okay um you guys why don't you take a 10 minute break i'm going to finish up with the other uh the other um room and then i will be back we'll be back at 10 after same word Hello. So Monday is going to be your first assignment where you will actually come into class. You will first, you have, I'm going to look at all of your workspaces to make sure your workspace is excellent. Uh, One thing that you will want to do to avoid confusion is to change your Zoom screen to be on mirror instead of the reverse. So have you done that before? Tyler, I know has done that. Miranda, uh, Anastasia, have you done it? So are you on Mac or PC? I'm on a Mac. PC. Okay, good, so we have both kinds. So when you go to your Zoom uh, selections, right? When you go to Zoom, you can go to preferences. Okay. Okay, and then you'll be able to select appear. Uh, it's not appearance. It's um, view. Is it view, Tyler? Okay, let me see. So just let's try it now so that you can do it. I just did it with my last class, but I'm on it. Let me just undo the share for a second. Well, actually, let's just do the share. Let's just do this, what I'm looking at for the modules, and then we'll do that later. But you want to make sure that your face is on mirror because then when you hold your hand up to your face and you're working in your mirror, which is up here away from your screen and your screen, then they will both match. Otherwise, when you look in your mirror and you look at your screen, your screen will be reversed. Okay. So have you noticed if you put your hand up on your screen, it's going to be the opposite side? Mm-hmm. So what you want to do is make it be on the same side so it's like a mirror. And then you'll have your mirror and your screen will match and that will make it much easier for you to have a successful makeup. Okay. So 
uh, I'm going to, I'll grade all your workspace, how to purchase your makeup kit right here. So please pay for that. And you'll, um, Pam will call you right back. So if you have any questions, that should be fine. Now, this is the basic, basic supplies recorded lecture that just gives you all the information about that. So corrective and glamor. Look at your, this is the first thing we're gonna do on Monday. Look at your makeup application sequence, which is this. And what will you do first? Here's what you should do before you come into class. Examine your face and then your skin, cleanse your face and it talks about that, restore your skin with moisturizer. The, this is the order in which you will apply your makeup. If you need to correct, you wanna do that underneath your foundation and your foundation or your base will be your best color match. After you apply that, you can then powder or maybe you're gonna wait and then you're gonna highlight a bit. This is highlight and shadow are, are the makeup terms for contouring. And so contouring is when you create a, a greater three dimensionality to your face using these products that are called highlight and shadow. So we'll take a few minutes in the um, beginning. You can go through the makeup supplies and actually look at your kit while that lecture is going on and identify each one of those things in your kit, okay? And then you'll the powder that is in your kit is a loose powder. I shake that onto a powder puff and then uh, apply that. So there is, a, there is a corrective lecture that we can also look at from Ben Nye first thing on Monday so that you can see how each one of those things works. Then grooming, you wanna shape your eyebrows. Uh, what do you wanna enhance? Do you wanna shape your lips? Check your teeth. Uh, sometimes they whiten, comb your beard, mustache, and determine your hairstyle. So those are some things. This is a good example of a photograph that gives you a lot of information about a character. It's a full face close up. So that's a, that's a very nice example of that. Okay. And then the next thing is the corrective and glamor rubric. So you will look, if you remember, if you click on this, you review the document, if you're gonna download it, which you will do, you wanna just uh, click on this side. So for this assignment, you are graded only on the preparation. You will execute it and you will take a photograph and it will you will have the practice of uploading the selfie and we'll make sure that you're getting the best photograph possible, okay? So your references are related and inspirational. You want at least two of them, two or three, nice big ones like the guy's face I showed you. You don't need a character analysis because this corrective is just you. It's you going to uh, put your best face forward to apply for a job. Then your notes, remember that is on your schematic. Everybody, you have a place for notes where you're gonna put the notes, what highlight you're using and where you're putting it. And then your sketch, you're going to try and create a sketch that is most like what you're going to do, okay? And then that creates 10 points that you can, you can separate that or you can upload both of these together, just upload it again on the Glamour, don't worry about that. This is gonna be typical for every single rubric. You will have um, execution is gonna be the other half of it. And that's what you're going to work on after we do our first five makeups. The first five makeups are really to just get you to use the tools, use the makeup products, use the brushes, and then develop some technique, okay? The glamor, your references really need to be dramatic and striking. So really look for some out there glamor makeups, okay? And you can look at, this is where you wanna maybe see uh, runway models. You can look at like Ziggy Stardust. You can look at other 
even some really exaggerated um, other kinds of makeups for inspiration. For example, you could even look at KISS, that band KISS for inspiration and just see what, how are they changing their face to do certain kinds of things. So, you know, rock stars are, are kind of, usually have a larger than life look that big runway model thing. And maybe you just want to go, there's a lot of things that happen that are outside of natural and subtle. So this would be, you're going on the red carpet for the Academy Awards, something like that, okay? So that is the rubric and that's under itself, corrective and glamor rubric. You can find that easily on your modules. Then to the, go to the next one, this is a recorded lecture from last uh, fall, but here's some great, um, here's a great corrective makeup. And this might be a video, I wonder if it's, so she, she is doing a, uh, here's a male um, makeup artist, shows us a flawless skin on a budget, shows you what he does. So I try to give male and female versions like this is you know anybody could have a breakout at any time and this is a really successful look and they've done a little bit of painting on the brows but you can see that his brows are quite great so they're showing what they've done and it's good to look at these kinds of things okay and then if we get off of that we go back to our site so here's a basic and again, this is not a typical model. This is a, a person who's in her 60s. And on the left is a basic everyday makeup to go to work. But this is a corrective makeup. Because on the right, extra care is given to skin prep. In other words, moisturizer. The skin is well cleaned, moisturized. There's primer, concealer underneath the foundation. See where she has uh, dark circles above and below the eyes. Evenly applied foundation, double layers of mascara and liner. The eye level of the subject is even with the camera lens. And this is important for your selfie because see here where she's kind of looking up and it gives kind of a weird surprise look, okay? And then the lighting is corrected so it's evenly across the face and slightly above compared to here where it looks like it's straight on. So this is a warmer look. Okay. That's my sister. <laughs> I asked her if I could, you know, can I use her? So, and my, my niece, Audrey, did that. Oh, no, Anna Michelle did that. Here's some of the of the processes. You can record the, you can look at the lecture demo and I'm sorry, this is not gonna be as good because it's not just only me talking. You will see some other things. Analyze your face shape. What are your flaws, your best features? Design a makeup that shows off your face to best advantage. Research, find your two examples, plan it, put your on your schematic record the products you're going to use, note any changes if after you execute it, take a digital photo, selfie, and then you upload it. Okay, right here, boom. So I'm going to show you part of this lecture and you can feel free that you can just like, you can zoom over stuff. So you see, this is what I mean, but here I am. Okay, thank you so much. So what we've talked about is just getting the wig cap on and prepared so that your face is absolutely exposed as much as possible and that your face is clean and plumped or moisturized so that the skin is in the best condition. So you can kind of go through if you want to just scan it. And then when I'm up close, I might be talking about something important and maybe not, and I don't really care. What gone because <laughs> I have to be ready if somebody walks in the door. So I'm sorry about that. Um, oh yeah, that's because if I where I'm working, I have to have the mask. We talked about the first thing that you would do would be foundation. I say the first thing that I'm going to do is first correct or do a primer. 
and color correct underneath for my eye bags, for my deep set eyes. And just make sure if there's anything that you want to cover up, like if you have some age spots like I do. or So you want to just look at this and it shows you some of the processes. And then you'll see a few other. I shouldn't say many. Some people like to put all the contouring under the foundation so that it becomes as, uh, as neutral as possible. And I'm just going to use this to blend so that it doesn't get so... Okay, so then you see the process as it we go you along. to use a sponge and a um, and then blah blah blah. And, and so we're like talking about lip, the makeup chart. Okay, and then so like lip so you, and then you would put the okay, and then the second one is thirty seven minutes. It's just it's because that day we happen to have yeah, a no. power outage. Okay. So should end at about 45, which is probably a little longer than where your eyebrows are. See, this eyebrow is ending here, but really it needs to end here. And it makes a difference on how it shapes the face. Does that make sense to everybody? So you can make that come down just a little and just have it be a little tiny bit of feathery and it disappears so that even close up, you're thinking, okay, I'm not looking at this girl wearing a painted eyebrow. One thing if you're very adept that you can do is you can mascara the brows. If you're going to mascara the brows, don't use black unless you have very black hair, okay? But I can show you how to do that. So then you can see some techniques, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, communications person and she had lashes up. I think let's go to the end of the corrective here. There we go. So that would be the end of it. And then now when you put your hair down, everything you know makes a lot more sense. When you're wearing your wig cap, it sort of feels like, wow, that's maybe a little overdone. But you know, you could if you saw me on the street, you would say quite a natural look. All right. Okay, so that shows you the corrective side of it. And then the next piece is the glamour makeup. And so then again, you want to be dramatic. And this is dramatic with the hair, the deeper lip color, more eye, and it can be far more dramatic. And this is showing you what is this difference between corrective and glamour. The hairstyle is a big one. Um, and so, for example, Tyler, you have a lot of options. You have actually quite a lot of hair. You can actually, you know, maybe you're going to slick your hair back. Maybe you're going to make it up high. You know, you can, you can make it big. The relaxed smile with the lip liner and better color. And again, good camera lens placement and good coloring. So your glamour can be far more than this. Okay. Super wild glamour. And then... You want to look at the same thing and your, how you're going to do that. So let's look at these all are part of your module. And we just went through each one of them in order. Okay. And then that will take us through Monday. On Wednesday, we're going to go to the next thing, which is thin and round. And I'll, I'll put that up um, this weekend so you can see it. And we're gonna do something called the makeup value chart. So that'll be kind of fun. Okay. How's that sound? Won't that be fun? I think it'll be really great. And we have a few more minutes. So let me, what I, I wonder if I can find a beginning of this video. Okay, let's see.
Here we go. Okay, and I'm gonna show you this because it's exactly the right amount of time for the end of class. And it is a male corrective. Okay, so let me screen share this. And I'll get it full on. And this will be part of the recording then. Okay, you guys are seeing the basic corrective male. Is that correct? Okay. And this is from the Ben Nike. Hello, I'm Dana Nye, your host for the series, Makeup for the Theater. I'm a makeup Let's artist and president our, of the uh, Ben Nye Company. My videos. father founded the company after he retired as makeup director of 20th Century Fox, a position he held for 23 years. He used his creativity and years of experience to design makeup products both innovative and imaginative. He also gave me my training as a makeup artist. Ben Nye created special makeups for acting greats, including Rex Harrison, Marilyn Monroe, Lee Marvin, and Marlon Brando. He designed over 500 feature films in four decades, including Gone with the Wind, The Original Fly, and Planet of the Apes. My father's light textured and densely pigmented formulas and colors are versatile enough to meet the varied requirements of fantasy and realism. Our products are designed to work on stage, in film, and on video. At the Ben Nye Company, we're dedicated to maintaining my father's high standards of excellence. We're going to show you just how easy it is to apply your own realistic makeups for the theater. In this series, we have two subjects to study. The first is a straight male character. The second will be a straight female character known as a beauty makeup. Watching this program is a great start. I hope that we'll be able to give you some valuable information that you can use to make all your makeup sessions go smoothly. To prepare for each individual makeup, there's some very basic things you need to consider. First, the actual design of the character. Study the script requirements and talk with your director, costumer, or makeup designer. Then include your own ideas into an outline, even make some sketches. Second, the type of staging and lighting. Is it a large proscenium theater or an intimate setting like a theater in the round, arena, or even a cafeteria? The lighting and color of the gels will also determine your choice and intensity of color. Third, consider your makeup materials. Inventory your kit or the materials available in your makeup department. If you need more makeup, order well in advance so that you have plenty of time to practice. Now, practice is a very important step in the process of doing effective makeup. It gives you the confidence to work quickly and efficiently. It gives you the opportunity to develop your own personal style, and it gives you hands-on experience with tools of the trade. With all this preparation, you can't help but be ready to go. So our lesson begins with a straight male character, characters like Tommy from Brigadoon, Rolf from The Sound of Music, and Curly in Oklahoma. All have one thing in common, they show no visible signs of age. I'd like to introduce Craig McAllister. He's a writer and an actor here in Los Angeles. Craig, how did you prepare for makeup? Well, Dana, I washed my face with soap and water, and because my skin is oily, I used an astringent. Excellent. Well, if you ever have, if you have dry skin, it's a good idea to use a moisturizer, say, 15 minutes before the makeup. I'd like to say that I rarely use a moisturizer, though, so unless your skin's really dry, you can probably apply the makeup directly without it. We use makeup for a number of reasons. Light, lighting makes the actor look very flat. Makeup gives dimension and color and texture. Um, I'm going to tell you uh, just about everything uh, that I can about what I'm doing. Um, and the very first thing I'm going to do is uh, pick up the sponge. This is an excellent way to apply the makeup. This is a three by four inch uh, latex foam sponge. It has two smooth manufactured edges. And uh, I suggest that you apply the makeup with those smooth edges as opposed to the middle of the sponge, which is lots of texture and after a while it'll decompose on you. It's a good idea to have a, a nice pair of utility scissors and they're good for cutting up sponge. So I'll cut my sponge up into quarters and uh, then the quarters into eighths. And sometimes the eighths can be cut up even smaller uh, into little sections like this. So the sponge is a real handy way to apply the makeup. Now I'm going to use a foundation. This foundation is a cream style makeup. 
It's uh, densely pigmented. It has just enough uh, oil to make it spread. And it's uh, light textured. Now the foundation adds color to the face. It evens out the skin tone and also provides a medium to blend the other uh, basic components, which are rouge, highlights, and shadows. So I'm going to start here on Craig at his forehead. And uh, where you start, it's up to you. As long as you're consistent. And what we're doing, as I said, we're adding color to Craig's face. His natural skin tone is washed out underneath the lighting. And uh, do you, are you wearing contacts? Yes, I am. Okay. If you're, if you're making someone up, if you're on the makeup crew, um, always check to see if they're wearing contacts because you can disturb them. You can, you can knock them out of place. So I'll try and be very gentle over Craig's eyes. And I'm just going to go section by section. Now, this cake of makeup, and this is not a pancake, this is a cream cake, contains a half an ounce, and one of these should uh, apply about 50 applications. So a little bit goes a long ways. You'll notice that as I start, I'm not beginning here and going all the way around like that. Work section by section, and you'll find that the makeup lasts a long time. Now, it's important that you don't stop the makeup right at the jawline, because if you do, it'll look like a mask. And I, I bet you've uh, been sitting in a uh, theater sometimes, and you've seen an actor that just doesn't have enough makeup on the neck. So make sure that you do the ears, the neck, later on, possibly the hands if they're too light. Now, what, what I'm doing here, this is kind of a... Okay, so... Uh, I generally teach you not to do the neck because that really plays havoc with the costume and you can actually end just below the jawline and smooth it so that it doesn't actually have to come all the way down on the neck unless you're really changing character. So this may be the kit necessary in certain situations, but unless you're playing somebody much older or a different skin tone or you know, an alien and maybe you're green. Um, you don't necessarily need to go down, extend, you can end at the jawline and then just shade, just blend it down into the natural skin tone, unless you're drastically changing your skin tone, okay? A, a padding motion, padding, lightly rubbing. And you can see that we're giving Craig a nice, healthy, Skin tone, look at. Okay, let your uh, actor know what you're doing so you don't catch them off guard. It's very important. And they'll like you for it. Turn. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish up the base now. Following the, basically, I'm starting again on this side of the forehead. Close. So at this point, the base is just about done. It's important that at this point, you look to see that the base is on nice and even. If you find uh, a little light spot, for instance, right up here above the eyebrows, take care of it now. If it's uneven or if it's blotchy, if you put on too much makeup, <clears throat> it's going to be that way uh, right till the end. So at each step along the way, take care of um, what is at hand. And um, the first step here, of course, is putting down a nice, even base. It's important that um, even though you're working on a big stage that you, you blend to make sure you don't have uh, very hard edges. Now, so far, I've just been using the latex foam to apply the makeup. The color that I'm going to use now is called the sunburn stipple. It's uh, a, uh, actually it's called a, a color liner. Um, and even though it doesn't say rouge, that's exactly what I'm going to use it for. This is a color that my dad uh, designed when he was um, still at Fox, and it's an excellent rouge tone. Now, when we use a cheek rouge, what we're doing is we're actually contouring the cheeks and um, giving them dimension. Our, uh, as I said before, our facial features tend to flatten out on stage. So I'm just going to pat, and uh, a little bit of color goes a long ways. Now, 
if we needed to make a very dramatic um, notation of color here, there, there's a lot more here in the container. But um, we're making them up for a uh, medium-sized house. And um, if you need a, a darker color, perhaps the uh, dark tech might be good. It has more red in it than the sunburn stipple. Um, all right, so I'm going to set that down. At this point, I'm going to switch uh, from using um, the latex foam sponge over to brushes. Uh, my dad always taught me to use a pair of brushes, one to apply and one to blend. These happen to be a seven and a 10. These are uh, oil painting brushes. Maybe some of you are already familiar with this type. Um, this is the light uh, cream highlight, and it's a good all-purpose neutralizing color. Um, if you, if you have any discoloration or if you're making uh, changes in the shape of the face, these are called corrective makeup techniques. And there aren't too many uh, corrections that I'm going to make on Craig today. Uh, I may thin his nose a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of color underneath his eyes. He doesn't have um, very much discoloration. But nonetheless, let's lay in a little bit of color with the number seven brush. And uh, go to the other side, and you can take a look at it before it's completely blended. There is a uh, crescent below the um, the eyes, which is uh, basically delineated by the the uh, curvature of the eye socket. And this area right here sometimes is dark. And uh, with my blending brush, I'm taking the color and I'm tapping the edge just to blend it off. Same thing over here. I'm going to take the color and blend it upward just a bit. Now, if you wish, you could apply this color with your fingers. I'm just uh, a little more adept at using my brushes. And um, you can also, if you want to smooth it out, you could uh, take your hand and, and do that. Now, as a corrective um, technique, I just talked with Craig uh, earlier and he uh, has had, had his nose broken several times. And uh, I hope you're learning your lesson so far, Craig. Well, if you're going to thin the nose, if you want to straighten it, you can put highlight on the top of the bridge. And then in a moment, we will be all use some shadow. And shadows and highlights work in tandem to, um, to correct basic uh, imperfections in the face. We've all got them no big deal. All right, another little uh, tip I've got for you. My father, um, well, he taught me to be organized. He was, um, I guess, very methodical the way he worked. And uh, so I'm just going to set my highlight uh, brushes down right next to the, the highlight. I know exactly where they are if I need them again, and I will. Now, the next color I'm going to use is called the dark brown cream shadow. I'm going to take one of these little... Uh, sponges that you saw me cut up earlier. And I'm going to use that in several places on Craig's face. Um, one spot is um, on either side of the bridge. And again, this is, you could see that you could use your little finger very easily, tap, 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 and you can put the color down. I mentioned that these were light textured, densely pigmented makeups. A little bit goes a long ways. So be careful that you don't too mu use too much. You might have uh, been used to using some of the traditional um, colors that are, I guess you might say that they're waxy or there, there isn't much color there. And, you know, you have to put a lot on. Well, with the Ben Nye, you don't have to use quite as much. You also might use a little bit just on the tip of the nose if you want to cut the nose off. All right. Now, you can take your finger and you can blend that lower edge downward so it, it blends into the base tone. Remember, the third reason we use a foundation is to blend with the other primary components, such as the rouge, highlights, and shadows. So this way, you're avoiding that edge. And sometimes a, a hard edge is fine. Well, now, if you want to do a, a little thinning here on the, on the jawline, you can take the makeup and uh, apply it. This uh, gives... Uh, outlines the, uh, the face, and uh, I'll follow through and continue it over on this side. Now, some of you might have been sitting there 
saying to yourself, self, this color looks so dark. How's he getting away using something like this? Well, if you, you notice I have a little block here. He's, and if you take this color and you soften it, and actually you'll be blending it into the base, you can make a color that's pretty rich in color just disappear if you use it very, very thinly. And uh, so that's how I'm, why I'm using it. And I, I find that it works very well on guys where you want to do just a little bit of um, contouring, but you don't want to make it so obvious. Now, the straight makeup character has in common um, with all those um, useful roles that no visible signs of age are, are really expressed in the, in the straight character makeup. So we can sink the eyes in a little bit, but we're not going to, say, accentuate the, the nasal labial folds, or we're not going to knock any shadow in underneath the eyes. Uh, we can... We can create a little bit of a, a break here at the side of the, the cheekbone. And if you're working in a, in a, a, very, uh, in a much bigger stage, you, you might want to switch to our character shadow. Some of you are already familiar with character shadow. It's one of those basic colors that's included in all of our kits, almost all of our kits. And it's a mixture of medium brown and purple. You'll see that later in our, our, our second series where we actually discuss the old age makeup, it's a mixture of medium brown and purple. So it's, it's much redder. So I'm going with a more neutral color today. And, and nonetheless, I think it's a, a very effective color. And just back to the eyes, just a little bit of color over the eyes. When Craig is performing on stage, it's very important that the audience have some kind of a vicarious eye contact with the audience. So we do a little shading above the eyes. We line the eyes, which will be coming up in a little while. But one reason we use the color up here is it so that the area above the eyes doesn't look as a highlight. We don't want it really light. We, we want them to be focused right at the center of the eye. Well, at this point, I've used a cream foundation, cream rouge, which was a sunburn stipple, light highlight, and the dark brown shadow. Now, uh, you'll see me using my Kleenex every once in a while. Um, I'll wipe my hands off so I'll keep my hands clean. It's up to you if you want to do that. Um, now, I'm going to use a, a, a powder puff. This is a, about a four-inch velour. Again, my utility scissors, they come wrapped in a, a little plastic bag, and you might want to keep the plastic bag. It's just handy. Now, the face powder that I'm going to use is called the Fair Translucent. Now, the one thing that I want to caution you don't use one of those pressed powders. They have an awful lot of pigment in them. Uh, they're ma basically made for street wear. So I recommend that you use a loose powder. Now, our loose powder comes in a shaker bottle, and I think that you'll find that it's, it's very um, useful because you just shake out what you need. Now, in the trade, this is what we call loading the puff. You know, I know it's very technical, but you know, I might as well give you all the technical words here. Now, rather than just taking that powder and just, you know, going right to the face, you know, like the old makeup gag or the powder puff gag here, I rubbed it in so the powder would be dispersed throughout the puff and then it wouldn't all land in one space the first time I pressed it to his face. Now, the key word here is press. Um, rather than rubbing, I'm going to take the powder and press it into the face and there's a change here that, that, that you'll see. His face starts to look again like it did after he washed his face. It's starting to develop kind of a matte look. Now, if you find that we're going to need to put some more powder on the puff in a moment, but if you want to pick up powder for one, one little spot here, say right underneath the eyes, look up. You can pick that extra powder up and just press it in there. Okay, look up, as long as we're doing underneath the eyes. Let's go over on this side, too. All right. You see, I'm not using a whole heck of a lot of powder here. All right? Because there's just enough oil in the makeup to make it spread. And uh, close. Okay, let's go over the eyes and set them very well. They open and close during the course of the show. They tend to get oily. Now, you could take the reverse side of the uh, powder puff and just go over the face like this if you want. Or 
There's a nifty duster brush. That's uh, a nice way to remove powder. Now, if you want, you could actually powder uh, to the face with, with the duster brush as well. You can work it either way. But I cut one particular piece of sponge here at the beginning. I, I cut it in a, in a little different shape, and uh, it's got a wedge to it. And I've got a little bottle of water. So those of you that um, are, already have your own makeup kit, and I know that many of you who are in college are already using a, a kit, there's some things that you want to add, like the utility scissors, um, maybe a bottle of water. What I like to do is just spray a little bit of water on the sponge. And I can go over the eyebrows and remove all the excess powder that way. You can take the extra powder out of, the, out of a mustache or sideburns. And this just perks up the look just a little bit. And some of you might say, ah, he's setting the makeup. Well, I could be setting the makeup, but basically it's just uh, to remove the excess powder. So at this point, um, another little item here, it's like a toothbrush, but it's called a dye brush. So you could take a little bit of that dark brown, cream brown shadow that I use, and you can just pick up a little color, work it into your brush. Notice I use my hand as a palette quite a bit. Um, the colors are very densely pigmented. A little bit goes a long way. I know I've said that before. But uh, remember it. I don't want you to, to go to the eyebrows and just, you know, put on the makeup a foot thick. You don't want to. So one thing I will mention is that uh, it, you can use your wrist for a palette as long as you're making up yourself. When you're making up someone else, you really don't want to use your skin, put your, the brush on your skin with the makeup and then put it on their face. So for hygiene purposes, you can use your wrist as a palette for yourself. And then when you're putting it on someone else, you want to use a separate stainless steel palette or a glass palette or a mirror or anything to um, you can use the lid of the makeup. We'll talk about those refined techniques. I do that, but then with the dye brush, I could go back over the brows. I can just darken them just a little bit. You know, they're shaped pretty well. And you can go into the sideburns. And, uh, you know, basically we've got it. Now, I do want to just mention the uh, eyebrow pencil. Now, you can see I've used this one for a while. Uh, this particular color is the dark brown. I'm going to match um, the eyebrow um, outline um, embellishments, what have you. Two is the uh, eyebrow and hair color. Okay, so the dark brown is pretty close here. Now, what I, I might want to do is just take a little bit of the, bra the pencil here, and if, if there's some light areas, I can just make little edge marks. Okay, turn. How does the makeup feel so far? Fine. Like I'm not wearing it. Now I'm going to go to Craig's uh, lower lashes with a pencil that you may have already started to notice is not sharpened with a traditional pencil sharpener. Um, I'm going to just show you in a moment here how to do it. Now I'm going beneath his lashes. This tends to thicken the lashes and it helps to frame his eyes. Now, we can also take, close, this dark brown pencil, and we can also line the eyes as well. Okay, now, another little extra for your kit are Q-tips. And you might feel more comfortable using Q-tips to, to, to blend um, eye color. But if you have a very light touch, you can... Apply the, uh, the liner here with the pencil and then, and then soften it. Now, if you're working on a very large stage, a proscenium stage, you probably won't have to soften this eye line very much. But if you're working up close, and I know that many of you who work in a, who, who are going to school in a high school level, I know that many of you work in a cafeteria or something very intimate, you want to soften that a little bit. Now, the pencil has been sharpened with a blade. 
And uh, I want to caution you that when you use the blade, be very careful. Um, you certainly do not want to be distracted by other people. And for those who are saying, yeah, I used the blade and it broke. Yeah. Well, they will break. There's no doubt about it. But if you'll put it in the freezer, this is a little trick that my dad taught me. Put it in the freezer for about five minutes. And then if you take the blade, and I'm just going to sharpen it. And you can sharpen it so you have a knife-like edge. Use your thumb as a pusher. If you pull it out of the freezer, it'll sharpen quite nicely. Now, if you're using a double a, a single-sided razor, be sure that you put the cover on afterwards. And, uh, of course, the other way to uh, sharpen the pencils with a uh, traditional uh, pencil sharpener, and they work fine, okay, except if you want a nice pointed um, pencil with a knife-like edge. Now, we're coming to the conclusion of his makeup, and there's just a couple of the things that we want to do um, you note that we have uh, a certain amount of um, lining around the eye. We've worked on the eyebrows. Um, mascara is uh, important. And if you're making someone else up, this is a very important little trick. Have the actor look out here somewhere, okay? We don't want them to be looking at the wand. So the other thing is make sure that there are no act the, there's no one else who's really distracting the person that you're making up. So... Craig, look out here, and I'm going to use a brown on him today. If he was working in a very, very large theater, we might go to a black or a uh, brown black. Look out. Okay. Now, to go underneath, you have your actor look up. Okay. All right. This just makes the lashes look thicker. It helps to frame the eyes. Look out. It's, as I mentioned before, it's very important that you have contact, even a vicarious contact with the audience, uh, to your eyes. And... Uh, to your mouth as well. Now I say your mouth, um, there's a number of uh, lip colors that can be used um, to um, outline and, and color the lips, but there's one very important color that I recommend, and this is called the natural number seven lip color. My dad designed it when he was still at Fox, and when you want a lip color that really doesn't look like lip color, this is it. And it's, uh, some of you are open, some of you have already used it, because we used it and we use it in all of our makeup kits. The video is uh, it comes in a little flat cake. Okay. A little pat in the makeup kits. Hold on. But uh, let me see if I can. Find what it. this does is is it just I don't know where he went. Gives Eyes Craig up. some outline to his lips. That's so weird because I can. And still hear uh, him. you know <clears throat> we're a nation of lip readers as it turns out, and when they can't see your lips. The audience tends to turn you out, I must to tune you out. And uh, so the lip color is really important. Now, <clears throat> the next um, and one of the final uh, makeups that I want to apply to finish off the uh, straight go. character makeup is a rouge. Um, now, I don't know why that happened. I didn't touch the screen. So just a second. And if you need to leave, go ahead. I'm going to backtrack just a few minutes, okay? So you're seeing him now, and I'm going to start. You can go back and apply additional cream highlight, shadow, or rouge after you powdered. But you might want to go ahead and use a dry color. And this is called the Coral Dry Rouge. It gives him a little bit more vitality. It gives a connotation of health. It also helps to define the cheekbones too. So the cheek rouge is actually a coloring, uh, a contouring uh, component. Now, when it comes to hands, neck, 
or general body makeup. I recommend using our new water. Oh, sorry, I see what's happening. Okay. Based color cake makeup. It's very similar to Max Factor's now discontinued theatrical pancake. So look for it. It works very well. Now to recap the products I use for this. There's no video. We I know. Used I'm, for I'm the foundation, oh, M1, which is, is a light bronze. We use the sunburn stipple for the rouge, for okay. the cream shadow, the dark brown. So I'm going to go back to here. What happened? I'm Our makeup kits. Uh, it comes in a little flat. So he did his rouge, and here you are. Our new water-based color cake makeup. It's very similar to Max Factor's now discontinued theatrical pancake. So look for it. It works very well. Now to recap the products I used for this makeup, we used for the foundation an M1, which is the light bronze. We used the sunburn stipple for the rouge, for the cream shadow, the dark brown. The cream highlight was the light. The face powder was fair. Eyebrow pencil was the dark brown. The mascara was brown. The lip color is the natural. And the uh, dry rouge was the coral. Well, our subject is now complete. And he's either ready for a tech rehearsal or the curtain. And if it's tech, some further adjustments might be necessary. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for our next lesson of straight female makeup. Thank okay. So thank you very much for persevering. And hopefully uh, we got everything that we needed to get. So can I come right now? Yeah, you can come right now. I have it all ready. So should I go to the office, right? So what you should do is go to, um, do you know where the, I'm gonna stop recording, just a second.